Welcome to day 14 of my A4 Advent calendar. In this series of videos I show you in 24 days how to program the A4R APIP microcontroller. So here I have paper bag number 15 and now let's take a look what's inside this paper bag. Okay, so here we have this integrated circuit. This is the 74HC595 and this is a serial in parallel out shift register. And in today's video I want to show you how to use this integrated circuit with the SPI interface of the AppMega ADAPI microcontroller. But first let's talk a little bit about what SPI is and how it works. So SPI stands for Serial Peripheral Interface and it's a master-slave um, protocol. So this means, um, this means we have a master which initializes transfers and we have a slave which responds to the request of the master. So here we can see it, we have a SPI master or controller and a SPI peri peripheral or slave. And we have four pins. So first we have the, um, a clock pin driven by the master and this clock pin tells us when to sample the data. Then we have the master input slave out the master output slave input pin to transfer data from the master to the slave. And then we have the master out, um, input slave output pin which transfers data from the slave to the master. And we have a chip select pin. Over this chip select pin we can select which if we would have multiple slaves, we need one chip select pin for every slave and by setting this chip select pin we could um, yeah, select a slave. This is shown here. So for each slave we have one slave select or chip select pin. And another thing to mention is how the data is transferred. So we have the clock pin and on every rising or falling edge of the clock this, is, um, this can be selected over the SPI register. We um, transfer a bit by the rising or by the falling edge. And on the master output slave input pin, one bit will be transferred from the master to the slave and on master input slave output from the slave to the master. Okay, and now let's take a look at the data sheet of the um, 74HC595 register. So we know how we can access it over SPI. So basically here we have a first row of D latches. And here we have a clock pin and on every rising edge of the clock pin data from this um, D latch will be transferred into this D latch. And at the first D latch we have a serial input pin. Now if we um, connect here the master output slave input pin and here the um, clock pin we can shift in a 8-bit value into these 8 registers here. Then we have this R clock here to control the second line of the latches and we toggle the R clock, the data from these D latches will be transferred to the output of the integrated circuit. And this is really nice to use with SPI. So here is the setup I will build for today. So basically here we have our microcontroller over our shift register and I will control this seven segment display here. And here we can see this is the serial in pin of the shift register and it's connected to the master output slave input pin. And up here we have the serial clock pin which is connected here to this um, clock input pin here. And this pin here is the R clock and here I have chosen PB1 here for this pin. So if we take a brief look at the pin out we see um, these um, SPI pins are all connected to port B, so first I have to set port B5, port B3 and port B2 to outputs and port B1 for our R clock. And then I can use the SPI interface. So let's take a look how to use the SPI interface and which registers are there. So basically we have the SPI control register to set everything up. So bit 7 is the SPI interrupt enable pin, so if we want to use interrupts we have to enable this bit. Then we have the SPI enable bit, so to enable the SPI interface we have to write a 1 to it. The next pin is for the data order, so we can choose if we want to transfer the most significant byte or the last significant byte first. But I will let the default state in here. Bit 4 is the master or slave select. So when we write this bit to 1 we are in master mode, which I will use if we would leave it 
at zero we would be in slave mode. And these two bits here control on which clock edge data will be sampled. And over these two um, bits here we can select a clock divider. Because once again the, in, the um, SBI clock is um, comes from our system clock and here we can set a prescaler. And here in the status register we have this SPI interrupt flag and this flag will be set when a transfer is complete. So here we can check if a transfer is complete. And the last and maybe most important register is the SPI data register because if you are in master mode all we have to do to initialize the transfer is we have to write into this register here and then a new SPI transfer will start. And for example, if we got data back from the slave, after the SBI transfer, the data will be here in this register. Okay, cool. So now let's try to program um, or uh, yeah, something to control the seven segment display with this um, shift register over SBI. So give me a second so I can make the connections. Okay, the connections are done. So let me see the into my um, A4 advent calendars folder. And here I will use this um, folder 7 segment display as a template for today. I will create a new folder called SPI74HC595 and let me cd into it. Okay, so here we have a main file and a make file. And an important thing to do is here in the make file, okay, we already have the right frequency here, perfect. And our output name should be SPI out. Okay. So the first thing I will do is, we don't need a state variable any longer, and I will clear everything in this endless loop here. Yeah, we don't need this too. First we have to init some GPIOs. So we need PV5 as an input, we need PV3 as an input, we need pb1 as an input, oh, 2 and pb1 as an uh, output, not input, sorry. Okay, then I will set pb1 um, to 0 at the start. P and pb1 is the R clock here. Okay, and now let's init the SPI interface. Okay, the first thing we will do is we will write to the SPI control register and here I will set the master mode and I will set the pre clock prescaler to 3. So 3 means if we go up here, um, we will divide the um, system clock by 128. So quite slow, but for us it's okay. And then I will enable the SPI interface by setting the SPI enable bit here. I hope it's SPI enable. Let me check. Yeah, SPI enable. Okay. And I have a counter variable and I will update this counter variable every half second. So I will add a delay of 500 milliseconds here. And now I will create, um, start a new transfer by writing to the SPI data register. And here I will just write the corresponding um, value of my segment this for my segment display here. So for example, this 63 is the code for displaying a zero here. And then I have to wait until the transfer is done and I can do this by checking if bit um, SPI interface uh, interrupt flag is set because if it's not set the transaction hasn't finished but when it's set the transaction is finished and now I, the last thing I have to do is I have to toggle the R clock well this is simple yeah let's copy just this here we need it two times here and we need a small delay so let's make a delay of five seconds here. And I have to set it once and then I can clear it. Yeah, maybe let's add this here too. Set our clock. And then here it's reset our clock. 
Okay, so let me try to build this and flash this. Yep. And our output file is sbiout.hex. So let me try to flash it. I have to give it my password. Okay, it's not working. Why it isn't working? Let me troubleshoot for a second and then I will come back. Okay, I think I got the error. It was quite a stupid one. So here I'm setting the pins for port D, but of course I have to set the pins of port B. So let me try it once again. Let me flash it. Yeah, and now we can see this here toggling. But another cool thing, when I'm already here, I have this logic analyzer here and here I can show you how the SPI protocol looks like a little bit better. So yeah, let's take a brief look at it while we are already here. So so up here we have our um, our clock, SPI clock. This is our data pin and this here is the R clock pin. We can see this because if we take a look at the time this pin here is high, you see it's the, yeah, it's the five or four milliseconds we have configured. Yeah, and when we want to see which value is um, yeah, shown here, there are some decoders here. So, or yeah, here are the decoders, so let's select SPI, okay, and we have to add the, um, here, so D2 is the clock, mast output slave input is 2, and now I should be able to decode the value here, no, clock is 2 and this is 0. Okay, so here we are writing a 5b and 5b is um, this is 91 and if we take a look at our main function here, 91 is displaying the 2 for example. Okay, cool, so that's how to use the SPI interface to um, yeah, drive a seven segment display through the 74HC595 shift register. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. Thanks for watching and goodbye.